Hey, what is it guys? Welcome back to the Endless Runner tutorial. So in this one, we learn how to make our player go left or right, and then also add the gravity to him so he falls when he actually leaves the plane. Alright guys, so without further ado, let's get started. Okay, so since we're gonna tackle the gravity, we need to make sure we have a floor beneath us. So I'll go ahead and go under Game Object, 3D Object, and then choose a plane. Move this plane to the origin of the world, like so. And also maybe just scale it up by say 5x5x5. Five by five by five. So we have this kind of floor, and now if we hit play, we can tell the player is moving forward. Okay, so let's tackle the left and right first. We are going to open up our code, the player motor script. And we're going to go ahead and just declare a new vector3 up here. So, private vector3 that I'll call move vector, like so. Now, my ultimate goal with this is I'd like to replace what is inside of here in the controller.move by move vector, just like this. And I'm going to leave it like that. So, what I like to do is every single frame, we are going to recalculate this very move vector in this way we can actually have a movement that is, uh, well, pretty much just new every frame. And the way we're going to do this is up here in the update, on the first line, we're going to say move vector is equal vector3.0. Now, every single time, well, every single frame, we're going to make sure to reset this. And after it is reset, we're going to calculate the x value, the y value, and also the z value. Now in Unity, X is left and right, Y is up and down, Oops. and Z is forward and backward. So let's start with the first one, move vector.x. Now we need this to equal um, either left or right depending in which direction you're actually pressing on the keyboard on the screen later on. So in this case, we actually need the player input. We need to know, are you pressing on, say, A or D, left arrow or right arrow, or the left side of the screen or right side of the screen. Now, the inputs from mobile phone are going to come a little bit later on, but right now, let's just make sure that uh, we, we can control this using the keyboard. So, move vector.x is going to equal input.getAxis, and then we open parentheses, and we type in the horizontal string like this. Now let's actually do get raw axis, or I mean get axis raw. This way we don't get affected by sensitivity and also gravity of that input. Now for those of you who are new with Unity and you never actually saw an input this way, um, let me just point you towards where it is set. So we say input.getAxis but then we send in a string and this string is pretty much stored in here so we go under edit project settings input and under axis we've got all of these um, axes and we are saying get me the horizontal one so this one and as you can tell we've got a negative button a positive button a alt negative and alt positive now it means if we press left we're going to get a negative value in this case minus one or if we press A, we're going to get a negative value, so that's also minus 1. Positive button, R1. And also positive alternate button, R also 1. So this is pretty much where we get the horizontal from. Okay, so we know that this is going to return us a float. And the way we know this is because we actually read the function up here. So it says public static float, so it returns a float. So we get a float out of this, and we can then multiply it by speed. Okay, so if we go ahead and just try this out, now we know that we pretty much broke our going forward, but if we just try this out, we should be able to move left and right. So let's hit play. And now I'm not pressing on anything, and my player is just, just there, running. So if I press A on the keyboard, it is going towards the left, and if I press D, it is going toward the right. Good, so that's our left and right pretty much working. Let's go and keep going. So Y 
this is a gravity. We're going to do it a little bit later on. Let's just go ahead and fix our Z first. So that's forward and backward. Since we're making a endless runner, we don't really need a backward. All we really need is to say move vector.z is equal to speed because we're going forward and speed is a positive value. So now move vector is equal to 5. I mean move vector.z is equal to 5. And if we press play now, we should be going forward and we can also move left and right. The only problem is that we don't have a y-axis just yet and our player is really just never falling. Okay, so we need to find a way to actually calculate gravity. Now the way I like to do it is by going up here and I usually just declare myself a vertical velocity float that I've set on zero at first. So every single frame, I'll be calculating this vertical velocity. I'll be incrementing it if I'm falling, or I'll be resetting it to zero if I'm not falling, if I'm on the floor. So basically, what I'm going to do is before I actually do the x, y, and z, I am going to ask my character controller, are you grounded right now? So if controller dot is grounded, that means I am on the floor else that means I'm not on the floor so now we just created this if else bracket statement that is just going to help us modify that vertical velocity value so if I am on the floor then just go ahead and say vertical velocity is going to equal zero because we're on the floor and we don't really want to fall or you could be adding a really slight value so maybe something like that so maybe minus 0.5 so even if you're on the floor, you're going to be pushed towards, um, well, I guess the floor even more. So that's going to make sure you're really, really there. You're really on the floor, basically. That, that could just act like gravity, normal gravity, actually. Else, then what we need to do is actually say vertical velocity minus equal a value that we're going to call gravity. So we don't have this yet. Let's go ahead and just create it. So I'll be going up here saying private float gravity is equal to maybe 12. Now we can play with these value in a little bit. We're just going to make sure um, that it works first. So vertical velocity minus equal gravity times time dot delta time like so. And now when it comes down to actually modifying the move vector, we're going to say move vector dot y is equal to vertical velocity and now we just expand our code to all of this and hopefully everything works in one go so we're gonna hit play and have a look at the behavior of our player and as you can tell he is now being affected by gravity which is really great well, that pretty much concludes it for this one, guys. So thanks a lot for watching. If you have any comment or question, you can leave them in the comment section below. If you like this or if you learned something, please just leave me a like. I really appreciate that. And guys, I'll be seeing you in the next episode.